Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast all about movies. Each episode is about a singular movie, which we'll introduce in a little bit. But first, I want to invite you, yes, you, the listener, to recommend a movie for us. Yes, the podcasters. <laughs> uh, we take requests. Um, if you email a, email us at ff.filmfreakswithaz at gmail.com or comment on the latest episode of Film Freaks with a Z on YouTube or just talk in my Discord, the Ferret Nation Discord. And you can talk in the movie stuff area and recommend a movie there like our friend Antaskew. But that is for another time. The vote usually happens during Tay's recommendation, so if you put a movie in before then, it'll probably get put on the list of, of movies that are going to be voted on. Let's introduce ourselves before we introduce the movie. I am Yemi the Ferret. Who am I here with? Brady Waffles. Hey, Mation. And Callus. Now, um... Callus, how was Eternals? Oh, it was great. Well, I, I mean, last night it was too. all right. <laughs> Liked it. Yeah, oh. it was good. Tay saw it too. Yeah. Uh, five, five second, no spoil, no spoilers review. Go. Um, lots of stuff happening. It's it's uh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Tay, yeah. Know. Um, yeah, I know stuff happened. Uh, some cool things, and I enjoyed it. Good, good five second reviews, yeah. guys. You've sold the movie. <laughs> applause, applause everywhere. So I will add, you know, because everyone's like concerned it's a long movie. You don't feel the runtime when you're watching it. I will what say is that two, two and a half hours or something. Like yeah, it's a little over yeah, two, two and, and a half, half hours. Was there uh, any uh, post credit after the? Yes, credits? two, two. two. Oh, oh, cool. so make sure you stay for it. Stay yeah. for the very end. Yep. All right. Well, let's go ahead and introduce today's movie, uh, Greedy Waffles Recommended. Well, after coming off a, you know, a good movie like Eternals, as so Callus and Tay say, unfortunately, we have to talk about Carriers. Uh, Carriers, 2009. Uh, it was an hour and 24 minutes, thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Carriers, uh, as a lethal virus spreads globally, four friends seek refuge in plague-free haven. But while avoiding the infected, the travelers turn on one another. So, a.k.a. The coronavirus, pretty much what we're going through right now. Uh, so the directors and writers, uh, same people, David Pastor and Alex Pastor, uh, who are some of the stars? Uh, Chris Pine as Brian, Piper Parabu as Bobby, uh, Lou Tyler Pucci as uh, Danny, Emily Van Camp as Kate, Christopher Miloni, and then Care. Karina Shipka and a bunch of other people. Um, so I actually want to talk about the uh, opening scene, which we hardly ever do on this podcast, which is ironic. Um, uh, but you don't want to skip to the end right away? <laughs> yeah, no, not today. Um, oh, but based on. off of the opening scene, like I just had a bad feeling about this movie, especially I don't know if this might just be a gripe, but they roll up the windows when they go to with the guy and the girl, the daughter. And how are they talking to each other? The windows are out, you know, it's just like, I don't know. That just kind of grind my gear. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about the opening? Oh, so I thought you were talking about the, the opening opening scene where it was that oh, yeah, footage the past, from the beach. Yeah. But like, yeah. clearly, like this has happened in the, you know, early 2000s, late 90s. And the, there's like all this film grain and stuff, which is like, um that that that's not how our cameras really were back then <laughs> yeah. but, but you know that comes to like the writing and i don't think it was very good in this and the acting i don't think it was yeah not as good either but let's hear from a uh, callous and you know, oh, yeah go going to the actual first scene yeah with the car yeah that's what i meant but not the yeah, flashback yeah. Well, I mean, if if anything, I guess it like kind of set the mood for what the what we are going to be in for for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I mean, everything's mm. just like you know, kind of drab and uh, hopeless. I guess you know, just it set the tone for what the movie would be. For me, right? yeah, no, I agree. But for me, like, if it hadn't been for us going through the pandemic for the last two years. 
like I may not have questioned as much. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, the windows were down, but like they had them open to crack. I think you could see like some of them, so they could probably still kind of hear each other. No, you, you can literally hear them close the window. Like when you get that window sound when it meets that like rip, you know, like the yeah. black strip. You can literally hear it, and then they're talking to each other like they're standing next to each other. Yeah, I mean that's bad. I think the one when there was one window that was still open a crack in the back, but again that Maybe. wouldn't uh, wouldn't really help. It, I guess it could be nitpicking too much, but what's yeah. Yummy think? I mean, he's a little quiet right now. <laughs> I feel like he's building up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I thought like the first the first part of this movie was like the best part of the movie, and that's not saying much because I thought that still like. The fact that they roll up the windows and then they drive away really fast and then they have to walk all the way back to that guy to get help. Just, well, um, what? you know, just is like, a, I don't know, I just don't like that whole series of events. Like, even though I enjoyed like that first part because it like, you know, it's kind of like the mystery of like, oh, what exactly is this virus thing and blah, 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 blah. Um, what I don't understand is uh, what was like the, the father, like what was his plan? He just went in there with like... Um... What did you call the thing? The a wrench. A wrench. I guess yeah. a wrench. Yeah, or just like, no, yeah, yeah, break the window. Like I guess I don't know. But break the window. You know, like, what would he do against four teenagers or like you know whatever? <laughs> but then again, like, how does the virus work in this? Because I I know we're going based off of the COVID. You know, you're supposed to be wearing a mask. They're in the car and they're talking to the dad. You know, like outside. You know, the school. And then, like, they're next to the dad. If the dad is with the daughter, and shouldn't the dad get infected? Like, I guess, you know, you need the blood and all that. But wouldn't the no, dad be the infected? They yeah. say it's, like, they're in the car yeah. and they're not wearing masks. I'm yeah, like, it's like they say it, it goes through breath. And like I said, if it was before COVID, I probably wouldn't have questioned as much. But now that we've been going through this, it's like, okay, yeah. you guys are doing this way, way wrong and bad. And, like, this is yeah. not believable <laughs> in the least. <laughs> I guess you got to take that, you know, the what we've been going through perspective out of it. You know, like mm. they they didn't know, but <laughs> well, I mean, it's bits. I mean, as most people would know, it's it's basic like germology or whatever it's called. You know, pathological yeah. stuff. Like if a if a virus is transferred through the air, um, the best thing to do is not to be in the vicinity of the people and yeah. just like taping up like a tarp and whatever in the back seat is not going to help save you because. The air vents are still open, and the the they the the virus still could transfer through the vents of the car. <laughs> yeah, and they're just wearing masks, you know, not in the car, and then you know, like I said, they go to school. They're right next to the dad of the daughter, you know. You know, if it's you know on breath, you know that would infect them, right? Yeah. And then there's that scene where they go to the car to get the gas after you know a few after they take over with the girl and the dad, and there's that dead guy in the car. The guy he opens the door and he doesn't have his mask on. It's yeah. like, and and he's then, still alive. yeah, and, and then he's, he's alive, yeah. yeah, and then he's going to reach for you know the key ignition, and then he puts his mask on. I'm like, what? Like, it's so, not it smart very, writing. Yeah, this was very inconsistent. Like they say at the beginning, like, oh, it passes through touch, um, air, and you know, like blood, and then yet throughout the whole movie, like they make it, they forgot about the breath thing. And they're yeah. like, oh, well, because, like, you know, they made a big deal. Like, oh, she touched him. That's how he got infected. But it's I like... don't understand, like, how, how fast the infection works. Because so the father has been with, you know, the the little father. girl has, has yeah. had it for, like, what, two weeks, he said? Yeah, or a week or two? A little and, over a week. Yeah. And he's still weeks, not think, showing. The doctor. Yeah. Or no, a week. Wait, sorry. Go yeah, and yet he's still not showing symptoms. Whereas, like, some of the main characters, like, started showing symptoms, like, right away. Right. Well, so maybe the dad understand. was immune. Yeah. You know, the one got Brian or Chris Pine's character, Brian, for the longest time thought he was immune until finally revealed spoilers. Uh, <laughs> he had it. Yeah. I know. It yeah. seems to me like uh, there are no immunity. There, like there is no one immune for this I think, virus. It, I mean, it if seems you, like it seems like the brother, um, you know, the Harvard Yale guy brother and Emily Van Camp are immune because technically they should all have it too because they were in the car with the the one girl Maybe. not the child but the girl yeah. who was just breathing on them all yeah let's <laughs> i mean we we can even take that out of con like take that out of the equation you know like let's say that that tarp thing does work there are multiple scenes in this movie where you know the guy's like 
face first into a dead body, you know, or, yeah. you know, or the, the girl was uh, touching all the objects and then wiping her hands. Like, I, I don't know, like even like having Jody's jacket that was sprayed with um, blood inside the vehicle. I feel like that's also like, OK, so why? True, well, yeah. You know, uh, what if someone else touched that? I mean, it's just. <laughs> Everyone in that movie, in this movie, should be dead by the end of it. There's no like even taking yeah. out the fact that they, you know, let's say that the tarp did work. Like I said, they still would have been infected eventually because of all the stupid mm-hmm. things they do, and they never think about putting on their their mask until after they're in a situation where they're like, "Oh, I should put on my mask." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. where it's way too late. Yeah, it's just it's well, too late it, at that point. Even when that girl like tries to save the daughter, you know, in the back of the car while That's they're in that Jody. school. Yeah. Yeah. While they're in that school, it's just like, you know, yeah, you got blood on you. And then she doesn't tell him, you know, like, I I guess I get it. You're scared. But mm. it's like, come on, put your mask on first, then help her. I think she did put the mask on first and then it just like fell no, off. And she was like, oh, she well, whatever. She didn't strap it on her face, though. She just held it to her face. That's oh, the thing. Yeah. She didn't actually strap it onto the back of her head. She just held it to her face. And it's like right away, as soon as soon as everyone left to go inside the school, except for Jody, I knew that she was dead. I knew that yeah, yeah. I knew that from the minute everyone left her there. I'm like, she's going to do something stupid. And she did mm-hmm. do something mm-hmm. stupid. And she got infected. And she also, in turn, infected Brian, which is shit <laughs> shitty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he deserved They're it. They're all just dumb. <laughs> Maybe yeah, he he des- he, whether it. he deserved <laughs> it or not, I mean, it's still, it's yeah, like. Yeah, no, it's, it's still this shitty. is This is like, even if you don't like, even if you don't see the signs immediately, don't, don't you go. Oh well, maybe you know, maybe I should wear my mask in the in the car while we're driving or whatever. Like, no, she doesn't do anything. She just she just sits acts there. like everything's normal. Yeah, yeah. And I, understand, I mean, she like, did try rules. to avoid people, like not touch people. Yeah, and I but... understand like Brian set up the rules, like, oh, if you have it, you're dead. You can just leave. <laughs> um, but still, it's like, wouldn't you? I mean, wouldn't the first thing you'd want to do is be like. Hey, let's get rid of this blood-soaked jacket instead of leave it in the car for yeah. like until they get to where were they like the gas not the gas station they were like broken down on the side of the road for a minute or whatever. Yeah, I guess she was like still trying to hide it. She didn't want everyone to anyone to become suspicious of her or question why she would be getting rid of it. It spirals from there. Yeah, but the uh, yeah that leads me to like the character motivations are just like all over the place in this movie. Yeah. You know. I was going to say, uh, the characters, like, I don't want to call them, like, one-liners, but just, like, some of the lines that they had were just idiotic. It was just, like, when, like, going back to the first scene where the guy, like, hit the wrench with the window, and she's like, they're going to die out there. And he's like, everyone dies. I'm like, like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Like, what? And then it just happens throughout the movie. I'm just like, oh, my God. So annoying. Yeah, there's a lot of there is a lot of repeated lines in there, you know. Oh, yeah. So many. And then also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like the same sad piano played multiple times throughout the film. I didn't um, notice. I didn't no, notice didn't. That. <laughs> yeah, it, like the same exact piece. Yeah, the same exact <laughs> piano, like sad piano moment happened multiple times, and the one time where it's the most, um, it was like the most like awkward, like the it's. The whole scene was silent while Brian was spilling his guts about his, you know, him having to be the last one to see his parents, right? And all of a mm-hmm. sudden, in the middle of that, like, it was like really, it was almost sudden that like the piano just started, and it was actually extra, it was like loud, <laughs> and I was like, "What the heck?" <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what... I mean, are you are you sure someone wasn't practicing a piano piece in the other room? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't own a piano, so. Oh well, guess. <laughs> well, okay. do you have a haunted piano? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it was it was. I mean, it was enough for me to like perk up and be like, "What the heck was that?" You know, because it just kind of like started. It didn't like fade in. It just kind of was like started, and it was the same. Don't remember piece. that at all? <laughs> well, I guess I was paying attention to the music. Yeah. I suppose. I get, yeah, I wasn't really. I guess I, just, I was paying attention to the the shitty camera work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess the soundtrack is very forgettable, you know, and I think it's mostly because, like, the music is trying to convey the emotion that the characters aren't getting across fully, I guess you could say. Like, 
you know, I, I even even though there were a few scenes where I thought the acting was fine, I think that for the most part, like they needed the music to be like, and here's where you need to be sad. <laughs> we should also point out that the the movie budget was uh, a mere three point five million, which is like extremely low for for like a typical Hollywood movie. It's like it's very very small. Well, the thing is, like this movie kind of read as an indie film, so it's like three million is a lot for an indie film. <laughs> I know it wasn't an indie film, but it felt like one. Yeah. And then the the worldwide gross, uh, only, they only made five point eight million. <laughs> hey, they made some money, so that's good. <laughs> not some. enough, not enough for carriers too, though. Unfortunately. <laughs> Fortunately, thank God. <laughs> that's the joke. So I will say they, there's some things they did okay. Like they did predict some things of the pandemic we're going through. The fact that, like, um, they were blaming Mexicans, you know, because they said, oh, the Mexicans brought it over. And, you know, we have Asians getting hate because everyone's like, oh, you know, you have people blaming them for the coronavirus. Yeah, you know, I thought of that. It's, it's not their it's fault. Like they're, yeah, they're also showing, like, the type of hate that, you know, we're experiencing with, with the coronavirus. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that, too. But, I mean, besides that one guy uh, posted up on that poll or whatever, yeah, they didn't really delve into anything else no it was just or the, more like the process of, or anything yeah yeah it was just more it, people it was, hate it was like a checklist they were going down a checklist like okay yeah. so we got you know the crazy guy with with the truck that shoots people you know we got we got <laughs> um you know we got uh you know child or you know person is infected and you know they're trying to hide it you know check mark that we got yeah, um yeah. group of people who are who are trying to you know get women you know, to take off their clothes, check that box. A father trying to save his child. Right, there, check that, you know. <laughs> I guess it's just on the checklist <laughs> of, like, you know, someone gets hung from, you know, telephone pole or whatever, you know, I guess they check mark that off, too, for the apocalyptic movies. And also, like, the false hope of, like, uh, oh, there might be a cure somewhere, we gotta yeah. go to there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my wife walked in for a little bit and was just like, is this a zombie movie? And I was like, it is not. She's like, Oh, okay. And then left. Oh, well, yeah, sure. You <laughs> certainly feel like a zombie while watching yeah. it. Oh, it's it's, like, it's oh, checking all the it. zombie boxes, but it, without the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm. And yeah, I, I felt hmm. also that like so many scenes with yeah the guy that was supposedly dead in the car and then turns out not, and then the other scene with them or the one guy go inside the house and then getting attacked by the dog it seems like they're kind of going for a horror horror vibe but then yeah. just like it's not really horror i don't know it's kind of weird oh yeah. yeah check check the box for uh unnecessary dog death too yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course <sighs> um and what about of... like okay. uh, no it's just gonna bring up the real quick like when the guy just kills those two nice old Christian ladies, like, <laughs> wow. That was, that seemed very unnecessary. Yeah, it, it, I think it was, like, supposed to kind of come out of nowhere. Um, and it did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think it was supposed to kind of, like, be the turning point for now. They are no longer civilized people. They will do whatever mm. they need to to survive, even killing, help you know, helpless not exactly. Old ladies. Well, I mean, she had a gun. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, she did have, but they didn't know she did. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's you, a good. You... Go ahead. No, yeah, you. I was going to change the subject, so they oh, go ahead. finish away. I was going to say that it's a good segue to what I was going to say is how many random scenes that there was, like them golfing. I'm like, why? <laughs> Just to but, show that they were basically alone in the world and can do whatever they want. Laws yeah. and rules didn't matter. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's how I read it. it or what? Yeah, I guess read it. You know, I, didn't read I guess that was just the the checkpoint. I mean, the the thing being checked off as you know the the scene where they're all like just having fun, trying to forget off about the whole worldwide yeah. apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right. Anything? What else? <laughs> Um, I wanted, if no one else has anything to bring up, I wanted to ask, um, what would you guys think this movie would do if it were to come out in 2021? Well, being um, that the I, whole pandemic thing is going on, I, I would well, hope that the writers would at least understand a little better on how pandemics work 
And well, I mean, that. let's let's say <laughs> everything's like already filmed and produced and everything like by the time or just before the pandemic hit, and now the pandemic has hit, and they had this movie, and then they decide to release it. Like, what would you I guys? Feel, <laughs> I feel like they would not release it. They'd go, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is a pandemic movie by uh, Michael. Uh, there's a lot. Name? There's actually yeah. a lot of them. I, mean, uh, I watched a movie called The Flu last year. Uh, it was also a bad movie too, but <laughs> but you know there there's a good amount of like virus slash pandemic movies. Well, out Michael there. Bay movie just came out that's supposed to be about you know the pan- pandemic and all that. I'm sure that he did a really <laughs> good job with the subject matter. I <laughs> uh, yeah, coming from him, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of like s- sluttily dressed nurses in it too. Yeah. <laughs> There was also a movie called uh, Contagion, which is also about the same subject matter. Yeah. Well, to go yeah, along with uh... Callus's comment about them release if they release the movie nowadays, like I just feel like people would be like because there was a show that was that came out or very early on in the pandemic. They, it was like the show where it was a bunch of actors and they were behind like their webcams and they were doing let's just call it what it is, cringy things. Um, and I, I feel that, like yeah. this movie would just come across as cringe. I mean, it's, it's like you're trying to capitalize on what's going on and you're, I don't know. It's, it's cause even in, even with the subject matter for carriers, they don't really do a good job of like any, like <laughs> portraying a, a worldwide pandemic in general, even before the pandemic, uh, the COVID pandemic, you know? Oh, the movie I was talking about with Michael Bay is called Songbird. It came out in 2020 and on Rotten Tomatoes has a 9% and Metacritic it has a 27%. Oh, wow. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure Tay will recommend that next. No, no, I will not. (laughs) Enough uh, enough, uh, pandemic movies. I've lived enough pandemics in my lifetime now. Hmm. One. (laughs) To never have to see another <laughs> pandemic movie. <laughs> but, I mean, going back to Tay's comment about, you know, if it was released after this pandemic, um, it would definitely be more criticized, and especially more like, like, now I'm kind of like, you know, okay, they didn't understand the mask mandate, you know, all that. But if that came out after this, and it was still the same as how it was in the movie, oh, I mean, it would be a <laughs> zero out of five for me. Like that would that would annoy me the most, I think. Um, by the time it, the the movie got to the the school scene, like by that point, I could already tell. Okay, yeah, things are just gonna keep getting worse and worse, and it's gonna come to like a. It's gonna have try to do like a sad ending. Yeah. So, what do you guys think of like how the movie ended? It. Yeah, uh, very predictable. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, I I don't speak for everyone here, but I knew that at least the the blonde girl was going to live. I wasn't sure about the brother, but once once Brian got shot in the leg, I was like, okay, yeah, he he's done. It's going to be the boy, you know, the his brother and the, you know, the blonde girl moving on, you know, like as soon as that hit. It it was very just it was a very predictable pre- predictable movie in in a lot of ways. Yeah, I was actually ha- happy, I guess that the the two survivors, I guess, they ended with, like, if there wasn't a romantic thing between them. That was nice. <laughs> but other than that, you know, it was very predictable and just... Or it ends on a, you know, a little flashback, which is weird, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of almost thought that it, they were just going to end the movie right when they arrived at the beach. But, you know, then they kept going for just a couple more minutes and started from the flashbacks, which, yeah, was interesting. Uh, not sure how to feel about those flashbacks. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was like they were it's like they were trying to invoke emotions on the audience. And I don't yeah, I think it just fell flat. Yeah, yeah. well, like the flashback they showed, you know, they just took Chris Pine and uh, the other guy didn't like de-age them or anything. They were just like, so it's like, so you guys were here like three months ago. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to take away from this? I don't know. It was weird. And, and also had that weird film grain, which like, yeah, but even in the nineties, like we used tapes. Yeah, they had film, but they didn't really get the film grain. 
look to him. I don't know. It was like I said, it was just dumb. And yeah, they should have. Just... They should have just skipped it, like the the child actors as the, you know the olden times. Yeah, that's they... what they should have kept it as. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and that just loops around to my comment where it's like the the movie like it's trying to invoke emotion out of you with the soundtrack, and then yeah. also with like the ending there with with the him reminiscing about the good times. I mean, yeah, did that piano scene show the the piano tune show up again at the end? I I mean, it probably I. <laughs> I don't remember at this point, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was about to say. Never mind. <laughs> Alice interrupted me and I forgot. Sorry. Blame, hashtag blame Callus. <laughs> <laughs> Always blame Callus. Of course. <laughs> Just joking. It's fine. <laughs> uh, T- Tay had uh, mentioned this quite early on. Um, what'd you guys think of the camera work in the movie? Oh, so like, they, I know they were trying to like kind of go for that shape shaky cam look, but I think they just took it a little too far, in my opinion. But and then like they would have just random tripod shots. So I don't know. It was just a weird mixture of just not great cinematography. Yeah, I didn't feel like the know. framing was that great either. I mean, yeah. yeah. It didn't really affect me too much. Uh, maybe, maybe because I didn't really wasn't paying attention to that, which I know makes me a horrible reviewer, not paying attention to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it didn't really seem to affect me that much. But yeah, I uh, do recognize that uh, he'd have probably used better directing and also a better, better writing, yeah. maybe better <laughs> everything else. <laughs> also, I felt like. They like upped. I can't. They upped the contrast like uh, super high or something. So like, it just kind of had this weird grainy look to it. And I guess you know that might have been the style they were going for, but it didn't. It didn't look great. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was consistent throughout the whole movie either. Because I, f- I feel like I oh, yeah, only no, noticed prob- that like at night. Yeah, probably was. Well, no, but it was just, like sometimes during the day, like it was overexposed. So they tried to like fix it or something, and. It was passable, but it looked, I don't know, it just looked a little weird. And then again, it wasn't, it wasn't the whole thing, but yeah, just, I noticed some shots that I'm just like, why is, why does this look weird? <laughs> so, yeah, there was a lot of problems with it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Callus, when, when you were saying you didn't, pen, you weren't paying attention to the movie, uh, it's actually understandable <laughs> because I was, I checked out of this movie relatively early on. I mean, I still watched it, but. I mean, I was just kind of like, I don't know, it, could I could I call it hate watching? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I definitely. Yeah, you, yeah. at one point, just like that kind of throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was like, at one point, I was definitely just kind of half paying attention on my phone, going, okay, yeah, I get what's going on. And as I said earlier, you know, just like that opening scene with the car, just like you know, kind of set the mood for me throughout the movie. I was just like, uh. Also, <laughs> yeah, that car like. They went into a dirt patch for a few seconds and was just completely broken. It's like they didn't go over any rocks or anything. It was just dirt and a few like shrubs. It's like the car would have been fine. (laughs) Yeah, just I I was just kind of completely bored. And as the movie went, I I just got more and more angry at it. Like just the decisions Mm -hmm. of the characters, like. Once once Jody went into that trunk to try and put the oxygen mask on the little girl, I was I was yeah. just very I, don't, I wouldn't say furious, but I was quite peeved about the whole thing. And uh, from there on, it's just like every character was just doing making the stupidest choices, you know, like yeah. it all kind of comes around to like, you know, the, the brother going into that house without his mask on and coming face to face with a, f- with a fucking two dead bodies and a, and a, and a dog. And, uh, and then the decision to like, try and like try and talk to the old women. And the, I, it's just, it was like one bad decision after one after the other, they finally did do a good decision though, of leaving Brian behind, but that was like yeah. five minutes before the movie ended. So it's like, yeah. okay, <laughs> too late, you know, salt to the wound. Yeah. But you know what? It, Reminds me of yeah, guys. Ever seen the old Geico commercial of the Halloween where 
they're running away from the killer guy with the chainsaw. Oh, yeah, they're like, they're like, oh, we should go into the car. Oh, yeah. like, oh, let's go behind the chainsaws. It is just like <laughs> that is how that movie like reminds me. I'm just like, oh, yes, mm-hmm. agreed. <laughs> you think it was intended for them to just all uh, look so dumb? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you could get the vibe off of, like, you know, they don't know what's going on. They don't have the answer, like, how the pandemic broke going through. But I well, don't think they... I, 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 mean, mindset. They, I mean, the characters in the movie obviously know what's going on. I mean, they, they're they prepared yeah. to the T, you know? Like, they, they know how it's transferred at this point. They know that, you know, there's been multiple attempts at curing it. Um, and they know like the risk that's involved with getting, going, you know, two places and just driving on the open road. They, they know all this stuff. They, the movie uh, insinuates that they've been on the road for weeks, months, who knows at this point, right? However long it takes to drive from the East coast to the West coast. Yeah. So they, I mean, they've been through the ringer. It's not like they're, it's, they shouldn't be this dumb. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> if you've been driving yeah. for weeks on end to get across the USA and, you know, you're not strapping on your mask when you open the trunk to your car where there's an infected person or you're just diving into, you know, you're not checking out a, a place that you're planning on sleeping in all the way, you know, thoroughly enough, like... These are dumb things that any of us nowadays, and probably even back then, because like the zombie craze was a big thing back then, and people actually wrote books uh, about yeah. surviving zombie apocalypses. Shout out to Max Brooks. Yeah, and like people would. I mean, I feel like these writers just didn't do enough research. Maybe like they could have just gone to the CDC website and like gotten all the information they needed. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Like they have like pamphlet, you know, or sites on their instructions for each emergency. There's one, you know, there was one for there for a pandemic. So it was, I feel like they just kind of proves like, okay, masks. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally a mask. That that's all you need. It's just yeah. Well, and the fact that like the the little girl was the only infected person wearing a mask. Where it's like, because the mask, do, you know, masks do better at containing the virus than just if, you know, walking around not wearing a mask or if the other people are wearing a mask, but the infected's not, they can still get infected. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone needs to wear a mask. Yeah. But like the, I've noticed like also in so many scenes where they're like yelling or whatever, like the mess is like flinging all over the place. It's like it's not even properly covering them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, they're just like painter masks where it's like, yeah, that's yeah. that's not even a medical mask. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least they were trying. I mean, they they were trying. <laughs> Who else um, thought the tarp was going to be pulled down when the dude was putting his hand on it? I, I thought, yeah, that was probably going to happen. Yeah. I also don't understand why he decided that that was going to be the best place to steady himself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. At, the, at that point, I thought, like, he was trying to take it down. And I, I thought that he had, like, a nefarious intent. But then he just, like, stopped. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they could have done a lot of things better in this movie. But they right. didn't, <laughs> and that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> and that, that, that life is like a box of chocolates. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Forrest. All right, anything else about carriers? I'm. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, nothing. Nothing else to add, I guess. I'd say it's only an hour and. What eight minutes yeah. or something like that? Yeah, <laughs> Over twenty-five. So I yeah. kind of figured we wouldn't really have like all too much to say about this movie, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I would like to say uh, the pacing is all over the place too with the movie. I think that kind of goes yeah. back to what Greedy was saying about like them randomly golfing for like ten minutes. It seemed of the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there was like these parts where it's like, okay, I really would like more context to like, you know, how the guy got into the pool who was in like the hazmat suit, you know, like I really would have liked to know more about that. But instead of trying to, to, un, you know, to uncover what's with that guy, 
they do a, like a 10 minute golfing section and then a five minute section where they're, you know, being held against their will by the hazmat suit troop. Yeah. And then <laughs> randomly just two of them are like, nah, nah, we need ladies. It's like yeah. you're in a hazmat yeah. suit. Like, I have a feeling you're not going to come out of that hazmat suit. How are, how is this going to help you by keeping ladies captive? <laughs> and that sex scene, too, in the beginning of the movie was a little random. But... <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, there was. I mean, it wasn't like a like a big thing, but but they were at the campfire, and then the and they were like guys, f- like truck five yeah. feet away, you know. <laughs> yeah, like the guys in the truck didn't see the fire, you know. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, they took quite a while to like put out that fire. <laughs> yeah, and they were like right there, like the truck and the yeah. No, they, they would have seen. They would have come investigate, and they would have gone, "Oh, you're not Mexican, you're fine, but <laughs> we have this gun, so we're gonna steal all your supplies." And then, you know, then they go have to go find new supplies. And that's why that'd be a better reason to go to this resort, this golf course resort or whatever, than just, hey, we should just go there to golf. That reminds me, um, Brian's gun has unlimited ammo. It does. It does. Uh, yeah. He never <laughs> reloads once. Why was he once. spending his ammo on that uh, I know. billboard? The song. Like the cop. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> Yeah, because he had unlimited. He knew he was fine. Yeah, he yeah he knew it. He was like, I got so much ammo. That's just it's like just show a show a scene of him like having multiple cartridges of ammunition or something. But yeah. they only ever show the pistol being in his belt buckle. And I thought like by the end of the movie, like it would just have no bullets in it. So like yeah. he would try to use it, and he'd be like, Oh shit! But that never happened. He always had ammo. <laughs> So I guess we did have a few more things to say about this movie. <laughs> yes, and actually I do have one more thing to add. Because <laughs> I, I was I was trying to think, and actually the the guy that was like hanging up by the pole, um, like the sign had a derogatory term for the Chinese. So it actually has a lot more in common with COVID because a lot of people are also blaming the Chinese. Yeah, that is true. That's right. Yeah, it was Chinese. I thought for some reason I think it was Mexicans, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know my slurs very well, apparently. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did, uh, the okay. government, did the government watch this movie? And it was like, hey, let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to get political. but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, are we good? We're good. No, we are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, all right. So I selected this movie. Sorry. And so I will go first. <laughs> so Carriers from 2009 about the you know, virus, air quotes. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Um, like I said all throughout the podcast, like just that opening scene pissed me off the most. You no, know, even though Yemi said he liked it, but you no, know, them talking Opposite. through you no know, closed through closed windows and this. It just wasn't consistent throughout the movie. Just the one liners, you know, like I said earlier about we all die. Just, you know, it just got ang- got me angry. Like Yemi said, you know, just hate watch. You know, it just kept building up. Um, but you also have to take, you know, what we've been going through and what we know knowledge now. They probably didn't know that back in 2009. So I guess you'd give them a little slack for that. But it just still like the inconsistent, like writing the scenes, you know, the acting was not very good either. Um, but overall, I'll get this movie a 1.5 out of 5. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I thought the first, like, like I said, the first scene is, like, the best, but that's not saying much because I still had my issues with the first, you know, the first scene. Um, but I'm going to keep this real short, okay? Bad writing, horrible pacing, and overall boring... And uh, I, I'm going to give it a one out of five. Wow. All right. Um, for me, like, I didn't think the acting was horrible. Like, it wasn't great, but it was fine. Um, but it, pretty much everything, yeah, Yemi said, plus cinematography was bad. Uh, and like I said, it felt more like an indie film than a kind of, I mean, smaller budget Hollywood film. Um, I'd give it... Probably a yeah, one point five, maybe two, if I'm feeling generous. But yeah, we'll say with one point five. You gotta choose one. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Callus's uh, chart's gonna be all messed up if you don't choose one. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I gotta get back to that. I keep forgetting. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. What else is there left to say about this movie? I mean, uh, I've been trying to think of like, uh, are there like any redeeming qualities that this movie has? Um, I mean, the uh, I guess I could say that it's it could have been worse. <laughs> it's not. It's a bad, but it's not absolutely horrible. You know. Yeah. I feel like it. So many things could have been worse. So there's that, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, pretty much agree with uh, everyone's opinions here, and I would give it a 1.5 as well. I'm, I'm the lowest today. The... You're the <laughs> lowest ballpark. You guys are all channeling your inner Coco, giving it a 1.5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, you know, it wasn't like, if you if I was given the choice to watch this again or Brightburn again, I would watch this again. <laughs> hey, it's my job to bring up Brightburn. <laughs> Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I honestly would. I would honestly would watch *Brightburn* again. I feel like yeah, it's a more I would, I would well put together Brightburn. movie than this one. Yeah. But let's not yeah. rehash that. This is shorter. Epi- episode one hundred uh, will be our return to *Brightburn*. Right? Yeah, *Brightburn* we will be, <laughs> we'll be at season three by that point, and I will leave the episode before. <laughs> well, hey, uh, Tay. Um, what do you got for us? I got a movie for us. For a second, I couldn't remember if I had suggested this one before, so I actually had to go back and look at all the movies we've done. And I was like, okay, I haven't suggested it. And now, if I'm just trying to find where I put my... Yeah, here we go. So I am going to have us watch Fargo from 1996. Uh, it's directed by Joel Cohen. Um, it features Francis McDormand, William H. Macy, Steve Buscemi, Bruce Bond... Arv Prinsel, Sally Wingert, to name a few. There's a lot of them. Um, oh, even Bruce Campbell's in this. I didn't know that. Um, but the synopsis, uh, Jerry, a small town Minnesota car salesman, is, bus- is bursting at the seams with debt. But he's got a plan. He's going to hire two thugs to kidnap his wife in a scheme to collect a hefty, ran- hefty ransom from his wealthy father-in-law. It's going to be a snap and nobody's going to get hurt until people start dying. Uh, enter police chief Marge, a coffee drinking, parka wearing, and extremely pregnant investigator who'll stop at nothing to get her man. Uh, there's more. This is a long synopsis. And if you think her, uh, and if you think her small time investigative skills will get, will give the crooks a run for their ransom, you betcha. I don't know. That was kind of weird last <laughs> night. I could have stopped in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, you could have ended up a long time ago. <laughs> extremely oh. pregnant, opposed to what? <laughs> and not being extremely pregnant. That was such a detail. <laughs> that, I feel like they had, that had like three spoilers. Yeah. No, I mean, the, her being pregnant is not a spoiler. It, it is a kind of a plot point. Kind of. Not really. It just makes things, her, you know, getting moving around is difficult for her. Um, it's been a while since I've seen this movie, and I felt like watching it again. So I was like, "Hey, you know what? I might as well make you guys watch it too." I've yeah, never seen it. I, I've, yeah, I don't I, think I've seen wow, because I've heard yeah. so much about this movie, but I don't think I've seen it either. Oh, it's like so, I, I enjoy it. Great, great um, choice. But we'll we'll see how you guys feel and how I feel on my rewatch. But yeah, that's what we're watching. Sounds good. Well, if great. you, the listener, actually, it is available on Amazon, Hulu, iTunes, Google Play, all those places. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you, the listener, you don't want to be spoiled for Fargo, or if you want to join the conversation for Fargo, uh, make sure you watch that before the next episode airs in two weeks. We will reconvene to discuss Fargo. Yeah. Uh, already. Um, Sounds good. Anyone have anything else that they want to mention before we end the show? Well, nope. sure. Since you brought it up, I do want to say that a few guys would like to join yummy's discord or have already joined i am creating like a a chart of like every single movie that this podcast has ever reviewed along with like everyone's scores next to it like a nice a nice ordered list so hopefully i'll finish that soon so anyone could just you know go in there check it out yeah if you don't want to listen to full episodes you can get the quick fix <laughs> <laughs> I've actually Wait, been no, using it. Alice, I'm going to stop you from making that because, yeah, that'll stop people from listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Cal's, Cal's is doing good work. I, I've been looking at it myself. It's been a, yeah. it's been good. 
Yeah. Well, I need to finish it, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put... be using it to, as we get more episodes out to, like, did we already recommend this movie? Then I'll go right. well, that's, like, that's, <laughs> yeah, I did, exactly. During this podcast, during this episode, I had to go onto Spotify and scroll through our list while we were talking to go, okay, uh, yeah, there you I have cows this list. And, yeah, yeah. Like, it's easier. It has a purpose. <laughs> it does. I will put the link to the Discord in the description if I remember. <laughs> that's that's the thing. <laughs> Hardly ever remember to do that, but I'll try to. Re- I'll, I'll try extra hard to do that. Yes. Alrighty, uh, well, I am Yemi the Ferret, and I've been here with... Freddy Waffles. Animation. And just Kellis. And we are Film Freaks with a Z. Thanks for listening. Bye bye Later. Bye. Peace. Go Browns.